Bible Read Along, committed to developing Christ-centered, Bible-based, Spirit-filled believers who love God, love His Word, and love sharing it with others. BibleReadalong.com Good Biblical Morning! Yeah! Welcome back to Bible Read Along, or maybe even welcome for the very first time. My name is Daniel. I love Jesus. He's changed my life. And I love the Bible and reading it and sharing it with others. And uh, my wife, Ashley, helps me lead this. She may be in. Um, her parents are here with us right now this morning, so I think she's spending some time with them. But... Uh, Welcome. We are so glad to have you here. That's who we are. Who are you? Let us know. Say hi in the comments, no matter when or where you're watching this. We're live on Facebook. We're live on TikTok. This later goes to YouTube and podcast. But if you can, if there is a comment section available, say hello. And please tell us where you're from. We love to hear where you're from. Um, I'm located in Alberta, Canada. We have people that join us all over the world. Um, I know right now, even on TikTok, I see people in uh, Canada on Facebook. I see on TikTok some people all over. We got the UK and the United States and people just joining in. So thank you guys so much for being here. Say hello in the comments. Please let us know that you're here. Hi, Rachel. Your name's back. I don't know why it said user whatever last week but your name's back so that's good <coughs> okay breathe then i think we're doing okay so say hi in the comments couple quick announcements i want to tell you this week coming up we are less than a week away from the acts of prayer course the acts of prayer course I sent out notes yesterday. If you've already registered, you should have got your notes by email. So if you got the notes, if great. If you didn't, let me know. Um, and so you'll get a you will get a. So Claire just asked, is there a reminder email that goes out? There is another. I'll be sending another couple emails this week that include the notes, <coughs> excuse me, and also include the times. The times are up to you. I don't really have it booked. I kind of just keep track of who's coming to know, just to be prepared. Um, but I don't actually have like a specific way to, to find out what course you're registered for. So just be aware, you can jump in at any three times. It is the same course three times. Same course, three different times to choose from. So maybe you miss one. Maybe you have to leave. Whatever it is. Um, my breathing. Whatever it is. Um, yeah, just show up. That's it. Just show up. The Zoom link was in the email. So again, if you didn't get the email, sign up. It's absolutely free. It is a great course. It takes about 90 minutes to go through. Um and up to two hours, depending how much interaction we do. Uh, it is absolutely free. You don't need to purchase anything for it. If you want to purchase the 30-day prayer challenge, the Acts of Prayer 30-day prayer challenge that's available on our website, it is not needed for the course. But it is a great, if you take the course and then you put it into action for 30 days, it's going to change the way you pray. Um, it's going to change the way you see scriptures. So I encourage you to do it. But not required for the course. Um, all right, let's go to our Facebook friends here. Again, say hi if you haven't yet. Say hi in the chat. Let me know you're here. My buddy Matthew Baker here from Kelowna, British Columbia. Lynn here in Alberta. Uh, Edmonton area, Valentina in California. Welcome, Valentina. So glad you're here. On TikTok, we have Claire here from the UK. Um, good, good question. So Claire asked, uh, she was going to order the book, but she didn't know how to switch from Canada to 
um, UK on Amazon, there should be a way at the top that it says country and you actually just pick your country. Then it will put the prices right. It'll put the delivery right because trying to order from Canada to the UK is quite expensive, but to order it within, within the UK is only, I don't know what the conversion rate is right now. I'm a guessing you're going to be around six to eight pounds. Um, so that's about what I'm guessing. Reverend Rob's here from Arkansas, checking in. Amy from Indiana, welcome. So glad you guys are here. I saw Christopher here as well. Um, I forget where you are. I know you're on the East Coast, though, I think. So, um, yeah, looking forward to the course. Good. Me too. It's going to be an exciting one. And I'm not trying to just push it, push it, push it too much, but I'm excited. Uh, this is potentially, because Indiana, this may be the last time that the Acts of Prayer course is available in 2022. Um, just looking at schedule and those kind of things, um, this could be it. This could be it for 2022, and then we'll probably do it again in the spring of 23 and again in the fall. So... If you miss it, you're going to be waiting for months to take part and you're going to hear everyone talking about it, how good it is, how amazing it is. And you're going to be like, no, I missed it. So, okay. Are you ready? Let's pray. And then let's finish 2 Kings chapter 20. We only have a few verses. And depending on how my breathing's pretty shallow right now, but depending on how... We do. Uh, we may just stick to those verses. It might be a quick one today. So just so you are aware, if you haven't yet, check out Bible Read Along as well. We got lots of things coming up. Me and Ashley are involved in three Celebrate Recovery um, training, Canadian conferences, training conferences in the next six weeks. Uh, we got the Bible, the prayer course. We got our own CR going on. We got all sorts of stuff going on and it's exciting. Um, and if you would like to help just support that, there are ways all through the website. You can buy our books. You have access to um, other things, the Sharpie pens, the Celebrate Recovery Bible. And if you want to just donate and give so that we can keep ministry going, we can keep doing books, keep doing courses. We are very grateful for every donation, no matter how big or small that comes in. And so if you would like to do that, all the info is available at BibleReadAlong.com. Let's take a moment and pray. So Father, thank you so much for your word. Thank you, God, for what you do and who you are. We just stand in awe of you. You are an amazing God, worthy of all praise, worthy of our attention, our affection, and Lord, today we set our eyes on you. We ask that you, you reveal truth as we read your word, that we would learn your heart, your character, and even things that you are challenging us in to, to keep moving forward in our faith today. We ask for your presence here in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you are ready. For the word of God today, 2 Kings chapter 20 is our study. Type in the chat right now, ready, and let's get into 2 Kings chapter 20. We are reading from the NIV version, so feel free to join along. If you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, words are on the screen. Otherwise, grab a Bible, follow along. So we've been talking about King Hezekiah. King Hezekiah, godly king, did, did right in the eyes of the Lord. We've learned about his character even here at the beginning of 20, which we've already read and gone through. Um, they come to him with news and say, you know, you're sick. He's been sick. The prophet comes and says, yep, you're going to die. And, and Hezekiah's first response is prayer and the house of God. And the prophet actually comes back. And God speaks to him and says, actually, uh, go back, tell him he's going to be healed. And, and we're going to, I'm going to add the Lord God almighty, not me. God says to the prophet Isaiah, tell him I'm going to add 15 years to his life. Um, 
And so he did. The prophet came back, said, hey, on the third day, you're going to be healed. You're going to be, this is the third day, symbolism of the resurrection, right? So we see Jesus on every page of the Bible. Good morning, Daryl. Welcome. If anyone, um, sorry, side note here on TikTok, Daryl in the chat just popped up there, pink shirt. Um, great guy, loves Jesus, loves just worshiping and encouraging people with hope. His handle is at uh, Hope Dealer. And so find him, follow him. If you're here right now in our TikTok, go follow Daryl. So um, back to 2 Kings 20. Hezekiah, he's sick, he's, you know, but God, we see his character and we see what, what is always to turn to the Lord and turn to the house of God, the people of God, not just a building. I believe that the, the church is, you know, sometimes we get a little weird, like the church is not a building. Well, it is, it is both. It is a building and it's all of the people who attend that building. Um, and so it is both, but we need to surround ourselves with the people of God in the good times, the bad times, the ugly times, no matter what we are facing, we surround ourselves. Okay. Um, then God did a miracle. This is just a recap of uh, 2 Kings 20 still, and then we'll start reading. Then God did a miracle and said, you know, to prove that you will be healed, what way do you want the sun to go? So the shadow's going up the stairs. Do you want it to keep going up the stairs? Do you want it to come back down? And he said, have it come back. God did it. And uh, his faith was stirred. Sometimes we need a little miracle to show us, hey, God's in control. He'll do what he said he will do. So, verse 12, here we go. 2 Kings 20, verse 12, envoys from Babylon. At that time, Marduk Baladan, son of Baladan, king of Babylon, sent Hezekiah letters and a gift. Why is he sending him a gift? Because he heard of Hezekiah's illness. Now, Let's stop here for a second. Babylon is an outside. This is not God's people. In fact, they often were at war with God's people. They often, um, you know, took Israel into captivity. All of these things. Awesome. Um, all of these things. They took them into captivity. There's issues here. But we see, and I, I don't know the rest of the context. I don't read ahead. I don't study. We just read this together. And then I highlight what comes out. <clears throat> um so hezekiah is sick babylon sends him a gift to me i just sit here and i think if babylon non-godly culture sees that someone is sick and says we're going to send a gift we're going to help out how much more should the people of god be a support to those in need one of the things I love about Celebrate Recovery at our church and, and other churches, but one of the things is when people are in need, our team really steps up. When there's been a, a death, a sickness, surgery, these, <coughs> excuse me, we put together meal trains. We take care of their food for a week. We help them out. We be there. We support because sometimes just being sick is draining enough without all of the other stresses. And so, um, anyways, I just see that. I think it's kind of cool. He sent a gift. He sent letters because he heard Hezekiah's illness. Hezekiah received the envoys and showered, sorry, and showed them all that was in his storehouses, the silver, the gold, the spices, the fine olive oil, his armory, everything found among his treasury. There was nothing in his palace or in all his kingdom that Hezekiah did not show them. Now, I don't know if that was... The smartest thing to do, but we'll find out here. Second Kings 20 verse 14. Then Isaiah the prophet went to he King Hezekiah and asked, what did those men say and where did they come from? See, somebody else's spider senses was like, whoa, I'm glad they brought you gifts, but why are you showing them everything we have? Um, what did they see in your palace? The prophet asked. 
King Hezekiah replied, they saw everything in my palace. There is nothing among my treasures that I did not show them. Then Isaiah said to Hezekiah, hear the word of the Lord. The time will surely come when everything in your palace and all and and all that you your predecessors have stored up until this day will be carried off to Babylon. Nothing will be left, says the Lord, and some of your descendants, your own flesh and blood, who will be born to you will be taken away and they will become eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. So interesting here you know he sent letters which i think is a good thing but sometimes just because somebody does something good i want to watch this i want to word this carefully today just because someone does something good for you there may be wrong motivation tied to that goodness and um maybe you've seen this in your own life you know oh we we've had friends that in tough time for us we didn't ask we didn't they said hey we'll give you a gift we'd like to give you some money and now we didn't know at the time that good gift that was needed actually had intentions of control and so as things were progressed and went on you know well we should i need to be a cr leader and i said you're not ready to be a leader and i need this and i well and i should be able to do and we said i have some concerns with the way you're living and then right away became that well i gave you money i did this and i did that and we see this gift given with an intent a wrong intent now that doesn't mean don't receive gifts it doesn't mean don't give gifts it means we need to often know sometimes the purpose of gifts the purpose of why are you doing this do i trust that you're doing this from a sincere heart and because if you're not really it's going to come back on you but this gift was given with the the intent of let me see all the treasury and even if that wasn't the intent something took place in the heart of whoever came from babylon the the ambassadors of the king of babylon that they began to see all of this and even become envious maybe even jealous i want that maybe someone has shown you their home shown you what they have hey come look we got a new car we got a new house come look at this wow we got these things and you see it and even we have to guard our own hearts too on how we see things because instead of instead of rejoicing with them and praising god and blessing them in their blessing we become jealous and envious and 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 we wanted and we covetant we become covetous, coveted, co you know what I'm saying? Thou shalt not covet. We begin to covet what they have. I want it. Anyways, let's keep going here. Hear the word of the Lord. Everything in your palace, all your, everything that's been stored up will be taken away. Even your own flesh and blood will go and become slaves <coughs> of this foreign country. Verse 19. The word of the Lord you have spoken is good. <laughs> what a, I just love Hezekiah's response to things. Prayer, you know, and now he says, the word of the Lord is good. This is a terrible message, but he said, it's, it, this is a good word. I receive what you're saying. Hezekiah replied, for he thought, will there not be peace and security in my lifetime? As for the other events of Hezekiah's reign, we've heard this over and over throughout Kings. As for the other event of Hezekiah's reign, all his achievements, how he made the pool and tunnel by which he brought water into the city. He created an aqueduct system and these things. So not only is he a godly king, righteous. See when, side note here again, I'm going to preach for a little bit because we're still doing good for time. Um, side note here, when we are doing things in a godly way, Hezekiah's character was prayer and the house of God, the people of God, always turning to prayer, always turning to the people of God in the good, the bad. When we build our lives on the principles of God's word, 
He begins to give us wisdom in other areas. Hezekiah, you've been faithful. Your prayer, you're in the word, you're in the church, you're in connection. Um, I'm going to give you the wisdom and surround you with the people to help you build pools and tunnels and aqueducts and these kind of things. I don't know what you're facing in your life. There may be areas, there's areas in my life where I'm going, I need wisdom. And there may be areas in your life where you're going, I need to, I need solutions. I believe part of the call of Christians is to be solution finders for problems. I believe that we can have the wisdom of God, the knowledge of God, if conditional, we are doing the things that God has called us to do. Prayer, word, connection, church, these kind of things. And out of that comes wisdom on how to parent, how to run a business, how to run classrooms, how to run, how to run your, how to manage employees, how to serve in the church in new ways, how to write books, how to, you know, and suddenly out of, out of a lifestyle, a principled lifestyle comes wisdom that can change a nation like Hezekiah's aqueducts and pools. He, uh, he made the pool, the tunnel by which brought water into the city. And uh, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Judah? Uh, Claire just said, the Lord of, uh, if anyone asks lacks wisdom, let them ask God. And that's a verse in James, I believe. Um, and this is true. Like, and, and sometimes in our situations, we go, God, help, 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 help. Help, 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 help. And, you know, God God hears those cries, by the way. He hears those prayers. But as a parent, there's excitement in me, or as a leader even, there is excitement in me when, when people yell for help, I'm going to help. If my kids yell for help, I'm going to see and I'm going to help. But then there's a pride that comes, not an arrogance pride, but a, I'm proud of you. There's a pride that comes when my kids begin to solve problems themselves. When they now have the wisdom to go, I know how to get out of this. And there's st- that doesn't mean you don't need help, but it means you, you're, you know how to take some steps. There's something about a principled life. And I think this is, I listened to a sermon yesterday. I went to a a small church and watched a friend get baptized yesterday and um, out of town. I drove an hour and a half to get there and spent the day and an hour and a half back. And, you know, to see this and the pastor, small, small church, like half of us showed up for this baptism and a baby dedication that was also happening. Um, Maybe 20 people in this church. But the pastor preaches a good message, Bible laid out, good foundation. And he talked about, you know, moving from faith to faith, but he also talked about righteousness. His whole sermon was on righteousness, that we receive the righteousness of Jesus Christ when we receive salvation. But from salvation, we produce righteousness, a life that's lived after God's ways and his his heart. And so we see this, and I see this with Hezekiah throughout Kings. In the chapters we've been studying, I see this character that says, I'm going to build my life on the principles and convictions of my faith, and it brings about wisdom for the situations I need. I don't know what you're facing again. I know where to start. Turn to the word, turn to prayer, and turn to the community of believers, the church, both the building and the people. We need both. And so if you're sitting and going, well, I haven't been to church. I don't go to church. I don't get to the building. If you are going, I go to the building, but I'm not connected. I don't have relationship. Start connecting with the people. Find a way to do it. So let's finish last verse here. Hezekiah rested. He died with his ancestors and Manasseh, his son, And Manasseh, his son, sorry, succeeded him as king. There we go. That's 2 Kings chapter 20. Um, Let me know what your thoughts are, questions. Um, So Matthew has a question on Facebook here. Why Why did kings at that time, why did the people go to war in the Bible? And I would say it's probably similar to the same reasons people go to war today. 
Um, somewhere at the bottom of that is is often selfishness, money, land, resources, um, you know, coveting. I want what they have. I want to expand ego, pride. Um, so the same reasons that we would go to war today. Um, lots of comments on TikTok. I don't know if I missed questions, but morning and welcome to those I've missed. Hello, Tony. Hi, Megan. Um, just scrolling here. So yeah, that's second Kings chapter 20. What do you get out of this chapter? Again, I personally, as you know, because I've talked about it, highlighted it throughout this entire time, I see the principled living of Hezekiah. I see <coughs> Excuse me. I see <coughs> I see in the good, the bad, even when that prophetic word comes and says, "Hey, You've made some mistakes here. You showed them Babylon's going to capture and he still goes, God's good. The word of the Lord is good. <coughs> Sorry, guys. Was Manasseh a godly king? Well, Matthew, we are going to find out because Manasseh will be our next chapter. Manasseh will be our next chapter. We'll be talking about him. So if you want to find out about Hezekiah's son, Manasseh, we will be reading it tomorrow. All right. I think that's it. We're going to take off on Facebook. I'm going to stick around on TikTok. So if you guys got questions, thoughts, you want to talk about um, anything, that's the time. If you want to come join the conversation, if you're watching this, <coughs> oh, help me, Jesus. If you are watching this later on YouTube or listening on podcast to me, cough up a lung, um, but you would love to join us on TikTok, come join us. It's usually around 730 Mountain Standard Time. So 630 Pacific, 930 eastern standard or eastern daylight times um we invite you to come join us i'm gonna breathe that's it for us on facebook and then i'm gonna hang out don't forget the acts of prayer course this coming weekend you don't want to miss it so come be a part of it we would love to see you there god bless we'll see you tomorrow and uh, we'll be hanging out on tiktok for a little longer Bible Read Along, committed to developing Christ-centered, Bible-based, Spirit-filled believers who love God, love His Word, and love sharing it with others. BibleReadAlong.com